Hello everyone, today we're going to be discussing our last part of the unit, which is grammar. We are going to talk about grammar, uh, com the use of commas and semicolons in sentences. As you know, it's very important to know what punctuation marks should we choose and should we write to connect our sentences together. So, the semicolon is a mark of punctuation used to link or separate parts of the sentence. The comma is a mark of punctuation used to separate elements in a sentence. The uses of commas. Now, there are many uses of commas. I hear, uh, I wrote here two of them, but once we go on in the lesson, once we do many exercises, you will get to know more. The first use of commas is to separate between items or elements in the sentence. For example, I bought some fruits, vegetables, and milk. Or you can say, for example, um, I brought uh, apples, bananas, peaches, and so on with me. So you have to separate between them using a comma. Or after introductory words such as, after that, suddenly, in the uh, 70s, well, and so on. The example over here is, suddenly, the boys heard a loud noise. As you have seen, we used a comma after the word suddenly, which is an introductory word, the word that we start the sentence with. Now, when do we use the semicolons? We use them to separate between two different thoughts, or when we have too many commas in the sentence. Now, what do we mean by two different thoughts? When we are talking about one subject, but they are uh, are not so similar, so they are different. That w that's why we use a semicolon. I'll show you using some examples in a while. And for the present and past tense, you we should be consistent, and you sh we should use. This is just a note to tell you that in the in the tenses we should be consistent. We should not change the tense a lot in order to have more coherence and cohesion. Now, this is an exercise. It's not in your book. It's like, uh, it's just an exercise, an extra one. Uh, let's have a look at the sentences. We, the first one, we have to use a comma or a semicolon. We need milk, sugar, flour, and many other ingredients to make a cake. Now, we are naming the ingredients. That's why we are separating between many different things that's why we should use a comma just like i have a pencil paper eraser and so on so we should use commas the second one the representatives in this conference are from three different cities amman jordan baghdad iraq damascus syria now if you have noticed we have many commas and we are separating between a capital and it, the country, the uh, and so on. That's why we have to use, when we have too many commas, we have to use a um, semicolon, as you have seen over here. The third one, when I looked out of the window, I... The third example, when I looked out of the window, I saw the birds singing, the dogs barking, and the do boys playing football. Now, if you have noticed here, we are talking about a number of things. We are uh, mentioning a number of things that I have seen when I looked out the window. So because we are just counting, we will use a comma to separate between them. And notice that we have and over here. And the boys playing football. Now, number four, we should go to the library. There are three books I need to borrow. Five, I'll wait for your call this afternoon, Alex. And six, we have an English exam next week, don't we? Now, if you look at number four, we should go to the library. There are three books I need to borrow. Two ideas, two thoughts that are not similar, and we have no conjunction. If we are going to use uh, uh, something that links between two different thoughts, as we have said before, when we connect between two different thoughts, we should use a semicolon. 
Now five, I will wait for your call this afternoon, Alex. Now when we address someone's name, when we call someone's name, if he comes or if the name comes at the end of the sentence, it should be preceded by a comma. If it comes in the beginning, we, we should write a comma after it. And we will talk about it in details when we get to the practice book exercises. As well as number six, if you notice over here, we have an English exam next week, don't we? Now we are just asking. We call this um, a question tag, which is the question that comes at the end of the sentence, a very short question uh, that comes at the end of the sentence, and it all should be preceded by a comma all the time. Now, if we go to the reader's notebook, page 199, we have to insert commas or semicolons to correctly punctuate each sentence. You, we should look at the sentence, see which to use. Now, if you look at number one, when James signed up to be a sailor, he had no idea of discomfort, danger, danger and hard work involved. If you look at these three elements, these are three ta three elements. We are counting of the th things that are involved that uh, he had no idea of. Now, discomfort, danger, and hard work, they are related to the same idea, same sentence. That's why we have to connect between them using a comma. If you look at number two, he carried gun powder, gran errands, and helped the wounded. Now, these are, we are just mentioning or we are just counting the things that he has done, which is carrying rum powder and errands and helping the wanted. Now, uh, because we are counting between them or because we are counting them, we have to use a comma to separate these missions, the things that he did. If you look at number three, the four officers on the ship were from Melbourne, Pennsylvania, Trenton, New Jersey, Lebanon, Pennsylvania, and Baltimore, Maryland. Now, uh, if you notice, we have or we are already have many commas in there, and we said when we have too many commas in the sentence, we separate between the elements using semicolons. So we have too many commas if you look here, and we are uh, uh, separating between the state and. Uh, uh, um, a place in that state and so on. These are all names of um, uh, cities and so on. Let's continue. Number four, the captain, the first mate and the cabin boys remained on the deck during the battle. Now we are counting the members uh, who remained at the deck during the battle. And because the, we are counting, we are stating who remained on the deck or um, on the surface. That's why we have to use commas. Number five, the wind, rain, thunder, and lightning made the battle worse. Now we are uh, also counting. We are mentioning what made the battle worse, parts of the sentence, elements. That's why we have to use commas to separate between them. Number six. Finally, the sea calmed down, the sky is cleared, and the battle ended. Remember, we are just uh, just like uh, four and five. We are separating between what happened uh, uh, at the end. So parts of the sentence. That's why we have to use commas. Now, number seven, James felt relieved, grateful, and exhausted. Now, we are, co we are talking about James' feelings, and we, uh, they are all about the same idea, which is the feelings. We are uh, just numbering. That's why we have to use commas. Number eight, to find out more about this battle, we looked for those three books at the library, War Heroes, There and Now, Sailors, soldiers, heroes, and how they fought, how they won. Now, these are uh, title of books. What well, here is the Renan? This is just a book. Sailors, soldiers, here is a book. How they fought, how they won is a book too. So we have to separate between them because they are different thoughts, different elements. We have to separate between them using a 
semicolon. If we use a comma, then it won't be clear which book is this. That we would think that we, instead of having three books, we would think that we have six books. That's why, because we have too many commas, we have to use a semicolon. Now, page 200, we, are, we, we talked about it in a minute. We talked about it a minute ago. When I told you about the introductory elements, the words, phrases, clauses that appear at the beginning of the sentence. They add information just like suddenly, just like truly, just like luckily, and so on. And we, ha we have to show that they are introductory. An introductory is a word that comes from introduction, which means the beginning, which comes at the beginning of the sentence. Just like this example, truly, I believe it's important to know about James Fortin and other patriots. Now, truly is an introductory word. That's why we should write a comma after it. Now, sometimes we have introductory words. Sometimes it is a sentence. We will see in a minute. Now, page 200. Let's look at these examples or this exercise. Uh, it's in your, note, in your reader's notebook, in your practice book, I mean. The exercise says that you have to underline each introductory word or phrase, which means that you won't have to underline the words all the time. Sometimes you might have phrases. Then you have to correctly punctuate the sentence. Now, remember, we are using punctuation like commas and semicolons to separate parts of the sentences to make our sentences clear, because if we don't use them, the reader, when he reads any sentence that does not have any punctuation mark, they will be confused. So punctuation is really important. So look at number one. Like James Fortin, many successful American American uh, African Americans worked to abolish slavery. Now, like James Fortin is an introductory word, uh, phrase. That's why we have to write a comma after it. Look at number two. For example, Frederick Douglass, who lived in the 1800s, became a famous abolitionist. Now, for example, is an introductory phrase. That's why we have to use a comma. Now, three, in the 70s, it was difficult for African Americans to become successful. It is also a phrase. That's why we have to use a comma. Number four. For many African Americans, going to school was not an option. Now, for many African Americans, this is an introductory phrase. We have to use a comma after it. Now, if you don't know how to, uh, let's say, uh, differentiate, how can you identify those introductory phrases? Uh, imagine reading the sentence without any punctuation mark. Look, look at the last one, for example, I'm going to erase the comma. For many African Americans, going to school was not an option. You would feel like there is something missing in the sentence. You would feel like what uh, there is something missing, where should we put the comma and so on. So you will understand that we should write this comma after the introductory phrase. Number five. In fact, enslaved people could be punished for learning to read and write. Now, in fact, is an introductory phrase, just like suddenly, just like truly, just like luckily, and so on. So we have to use, we have to use a comma after it. Well, well, this is uh, also an introductory word. That's why we have to use a comma after it. Well. That is because education opened people's eyes to what is right and wrong. Number seven, as a result, they may have, they may recognize injustice and work for change. Now, as a result is a, a, an introductory phrase. That's why we have to use a comma after it. Yes, you are right. That makes me appreciate my education more. Now, yes is an introductory word. Yeah, uh, number eight, just like the answers. When we answer any question in the book or in the exercises, 
when we answer using yes or no and we want to complete the sentence, we have to put a comma after it. Direct address and tag questions. If you remember, we talked about them uh, when I first started the lesson, when we talked about when to use commas. Well, we use it for direct address, which means that when you state someone's name, when you call someone's name, and tag questions. Tag, uh, again, a direct address is when you call someone's name, and tag questions are the short questions at the beginning, at the end of the sentence. If you look at these two examples, they are sleeping, aren't they? They are going to the party, aren't they? And so on. This short question at the end, we call it a question tag, and it should be preceded by a comma. The second one, Rama, can you help me with my project or in my project? We are calling someone's name, so we should put the comma over here. Now, sometimes when you address someone or when you direct address someone, when you call someone's name, it, the name might come at the beginning, just like this example. It might come at the end, so it should be preceded by a comma, or it might come in the middle. We will see it in a minute when we do the exercises in the practice book. Now, pass me the salt, Sarah. If you notice over here, the name comes at the beginning, so it, it is followed by a comma. Here, the name comes at the end, so it is preceded by a comma. Now, if you look at your book, pay, your reader's notebook, page 201, you have to rewrite the sentences with the correct punctuation. Rewrite them, guys. Do not only write the punctuation. Here, I'm writing them again with the punctuation mark, but in your book, you have to rewrite them to write them again using the punctuation marks. Pass me the index cards, Roberto. No, Roberto is the name. We are calling him. That's why we have to use a comma before his name. I want to get started on my research, don't you? What is don't you? What did we say about it? Yes, you are right. Tag questions. That why, that why, that's why we have to use a comma before it. Taurus, the paper is due tomorrow, Bill. Now, Bill is a name. We are calling someone. So this is direct address, that's why we have to use a comma. Number four, I need to find out one more website, Andrea, and before you can, before I can begin to write. We are addressing someone's name, but it comes at the middle of the sentence, and I have told you if you remember, if it comes at the beginning of the sentence, if the name comes at the beginning, we should write a comma after it. If it comes at the end, just like this one, just like Bill one, we have to write a comma before it. If it comes in the middle of the sentence, then it should be preceded and followed by commas. Now, number five, you should have all your research done by now, shouldn't you? Shouldn't you is what? Yes, you guessed it. It's a question tag. That's why we have to use a comma before it. Number six, I have Henry and I have found out a lot more about Molly Pitcher and James Fortin. Now, Henry is a name that comes in the middle of the sentence. That's why we have to use a comma before and after that name, just like this example. Now, Rewriting the paragraph, inserting commas, semicolons were necessary. Well, this is a paragraph. Also, uh, it's on page 203, connect to writing. When we are applying the, using, uh, the use of commas and semicolons. Look at, number, uh, look at this paragraph. I'll read it without any punctuation mark. We have read about exception. Look how wrong it is. Look how confusing it is to the reader to understand the gist of it when you read it without any punctuation marks or when, when someone reads a text without any punctuation marks. We have read about exceptional Americans in lesson 18, unit 3, lesson 3, 13, unit 3, and lesson 14, unit 3, for example, and so on. You would find it so wrong. 
Let's discuss the first sentence. We have read about exceptional Americans in lesson 13, unit 3, lesson 13, unit 3, and lesson 14, unit 3. Remember, we have so many commas, we are separating between three different lessons. That's why we have to use semicolons to separate between them. Look at number two, uh, look at the second one. For example, this is an introductory phrase, if you remember. That's why we have to use a comma after it. James Fortin is a name, so it, uh, uh, we should write also a comma after it because it is just like the examples uh, that we have sold before. Fought in the war, built up business, and worked to abolish slavery. We are talking about the acts done by James Fortin, the things that he has contributed in. That's why we have to se separate between them using commas. So, fought in the war, comma, built up a business, comma, and work to abolish slavery. These are the acts of James Fortin. At the time he lived, this is an introductory phrase. If we have an introductory phrase, it should be followed by a comma. African Americans had few rights or opportunities. In my mind, this is a comma as well, because this is an introductory phrase. This makes him even more extraordinary, wouldn't you agree? If you look at this last sentence or the last phrase, the last question, it is a question tag. That's why it has to be preceded by a comma. So this is the end of our lesson, the end of the unit of James Fortin. The next video we are going to start with a new lesson which is lunch money. All I need you to do is to study hard to answer the questions of James Fortin lesson and to prepare, please read uh, lunch money in order to follow me up. Bye bye. If you have any question, do not hesitate to ask me. Bye. Good luck.